Hey, what's up, everybody? George the Tech. Well, I got something in the mail today. Thanks to one of the team here at George the Tech, Mike McGonigal. He's got connections over at a microphone company, and they sent me one of their amazing broadcast mics, which I think could also be a really good voiceover mic. But we're going to find out if it really is. And what I've got here for you guys today is the Earthworks Ethos. There it is, the Earthworks Ethos microphone. I've seen and heard about this thing for quite a while, but I finally got one here at the studio to actually show you guys. So let's just dispense with the box, shall we? I've already cut the tape, so I don't have to do that futzing around on camera. And it's a very nice piece of packaging, as many microphone companies understand today. That's important. Let's flip it open and take a look at what's inside. Ooh, beautiful photo of the mic. Compliance requirements. This is taped to the inside of the lid so it doesn't fall so you can read it. And the beauty of it is the simplicity. Everything is really already ready to go. It's already mounted on a really high quality triad orbit ball mount, which I love. And it has the dreaded 5 8 to 3 8 threaded adapter. But being an American company, they don't put it in there by default. They include it for the Europeans, which I appreciate very much. Now, Earthworks is a company that most of you are probably not aware of uh, or probably not heard of because they're not known for making mics in the voiceover, live streaming, podcasting, or even broadcasting space. They're known for making really high quality studio microphones, highly, highly accurate studio microphones. They branched out and they've got this, the ethos now. And this ethos is, well, beautiful. This beautiful brushed stainless steel chassis. I mean, it is really, really reeks of quality. It really is a really nice looking piece of gear. Hefty, for sure. This is not going to work on a $20 flimsy desktop mic arm. You're going to want something that has some strength to it. Uh, I don't know what the weight is offhand, but it's definitely more than two pounds. The beauty of a mic like this really is the simplicity of it. There are no switches, knobs, buttons, dials. There's nothing to adjust. The windscreen is optional, but probably most of you will choose to use it with. You don't have to because it does have an additional protection screen that comes with the microphone. And that also is removable for, I guess, cleaning to expose the actual element on the inside. Now, the element, the capsule, is still protected behind a screen. So you're not gonna damage it even when you take this off. But this provides a nice additional pop screen layer. So you really have multiple layers of pop filtering here. Probably most of you will start with it using the foam windscreen. Beautiful, I just, I just love the Triad Orbit pivoting ball head. It lets you position, rotate, tilt the microphone in any direction and then lock it in place once you've got it where you want it. Well, let's put it on my mic arm here and let's take a listen to how it sounds. So I shall screw this on to my arm and now we'll thread this guy on. Let's put the arm up higher so you can see it. There we go. Really, really easy to thread on. Now this thing doesn't need a big suspension shock mount thing because all the shock mounting is internal, right? So you don't need an additional pop screen. You don't need an additional shock mount. All of that's inside the mic. Now in terms of placement, I'm gonna kind of go with my usual off from the left hand side towards my mouth fist to thumb distance away and again because of this triad orbit it's extremely easy to get it in the position that you want there we go plug in my spare mic cable and today i'll be testing it out with the road uh, the roadcaster pro 2 which has been on my desk here for a couple of weeks now there we go so about a fist fist to thumb away and gain wise i don't know where we need to put it so let's Let's put on some headphones and take a listen to what we're actually picking up here. One, two, three, four. And now I'll switch to the Earthworks. One, two, three, four. All right, it definitely needs a little more gain. I'm only giving it 26 dB right now. That ain't much. So let's pump it up. 37 dB. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Now, the audio, uh, other mic I have up here is the Austrian Audio, and right now it is definitely using processing. Let's go ahead and turn that off and have a little more honest comparison, okay? And now we'll go back to our Earthworks Ethos. Now we're on the Earthworks Ethos. Definitely needs a little bit more gain. And you guys can hear I'm not in a very well-treated room acoustically. I mean, acoustically, it's pretty good. Soundproofing-wise, it's not the quietest. We're getting a little bit of ambient noise in this space. 
question is, is it self-noise comparable to this large diaphragm condenser? Because what I can tell you with small diaphragm condensers like the Earthworks, it's hard for them to get their self-noise as low as a large diaphragm condenser. So let's take a listen. This is the Earthworks Ethos, and that's with no high-pass filter or anything. And now the uh, Austrian Audio OC818, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I think the gain's a little bit hotter on the OC. Let's go back it down a couple of clicks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's the Ethos, and that's the OC818, and that's the Ethos. Okay, self-noise, pretty impressive. I'm telling you, for a small diaphragm capsule mic, it's quite well controlled in the self-noise area. And that's back to the OC818. And now the Earthworks Ethos. It sounds really nice. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There's your broadcast radio proximity effect. There's the warm, I'm intimate effect. There's the natural kind of, I want to sound like a real person. And there's the, I'm going to stand far away because I'm shouting because I'm doing acting or video games or something like that. Pretty darn nice. I don't do scientific mic tests. I just plug it in and let you hear what it sounds like. Just plug and go. This is totally flat. Again, absolutely zero processing. If I was to add any processing at all, maybe I would add a high pass filter. Okay, we're gonna turn on the high pass filter. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. That's no high pass filter, that's flat. And that is 200 hertz of high pass, which is really too much. And here is 78, 80 hertz high pass filter. That's a pretty typical setting. A lot of people's gear will have, there goes some passing cars. Not bad at all. But let's see what it sounds like inside an ISO booth where the noise floor is even more controlled, but it's a much more congested and small environment instead of my office, which is a much larger space. Let's see how the sound of the mic compares when inside my booth. All right, here I am inside the Studio Bricks 1. This is a pretty small booth. I've got a lot of bass trapping in here. Two Super Bass 90s behind me on the right, two more on the wall in the corner on the left out of camera. And here we are with the Earthworks Ethos, fist to thumb distance away. One, two, three, one, two, three, a little bit of projection. And now we're speaking at a normal, kind of a normal voiceover acting voice. And this is a much softer voice acting voice. One, two, three, five, four, three, two, one, five, four, three, two, one. All right, there we go. That's the way the Earthworks Ethos sounds inside a typical home studio in a booth in this case, the studio bricks, in an apartment. What do you guys think? Leave me comments below if you think this is a possible voiceover mic. Clearly designed for podcasters. It's a very much a podcaster form factor, much more broadcast-like, an end address microphone, but this could work for VO. And I'm pretty positive I would like to try it on actual voiceover work. I'll see if I can get in front of an actor one of these days, because that ain't me. Anyway, Let's get back outside and, and wrap this thing up. All right, there we go. There's our beautiful sounding and beautiful looking ethos. Let's try the under mount and let's put on cans. I've got four pairs of headphones, here we go. Okay, this is the sort of up from below. This is the way I think a lot of podcasters or YouTubers or live streamers would use this mic. This is a little bit more typical for a broadcasting type of situation. One, two, three, four, five. I could see myself using it this way for sure. Would I use a little bit of processing on it? For sure. I'd probably use a little bit of compression. One, two, one, two. And I'd probably use a little very subtle amount of expansion. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. There you go with a little bit of expansion so that you can get a little bit of cleaner sound in an environment that is not soundproofed nor has is devoid of anything that makes noise like computers and things like that. What do you think? There you go. Earthworks Ethos. Thanks so much Earthworks for sending it to me so I could give this thing a good run. Thanks Mike McGonigal for making the connection so I could get one into the studio. And guys, if you're interested in this mic, it's shipping now. Thanks for listening. This is George the Tech. I appreciate your time. See you around the web.